Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I just finished building up this storage cabinet that goes underneath the extension wing of my table saw to fill up what's otherwise kind of wasted space. It's got lots of storage for things like blades and face plates and my push sticks and just the stuff that I use at the table saw all the time. So let's get to it. It seems like I've been making an awful lot of storage cabinets and drawers lately. They're always a handy piece of furniture to have and the drawer space is always a welcome addition for clutter prevention. If you go back over the last year and look at all the videos I've done on the subject, you'll notice I've never made one exactly the same way twice. Well guys, I'm only a few minutes into this and I've already made a pretty huge mistake. In the drawing I made for this, the dimensions of everything are just right, but when I took those numbers and tried to make my cut list, I typed in a number wrong and I ended up making my side panels two inches shorter than they needed to be. And because of where I live, I can't just run out and replace this. I have a 90 minute drive to go get the same piece of wood. So to fix it, I actually just took a cutoff piece and used some pocket hole screws and glue to make my panel longer. And I made it quite a bit longer so that I could try to hide the hardware further inside the panel instead of right at the edge where I'm going to be cutting rabbits and dados and stuff at the end. So anyway, it feels like a pretty stupid mistake, but it happens. And this is what I did to kind of alleviate the problem so I can keep moving. I enjoy making shop furniture because it gives me an opportunity to practice an existing skill or to learn a new one on something that isn't of any critical importance. I'm not making it as a gift or as a piece to sell. It's just for me. So I like to make them as nice as I can, but if it has flaws, nobody cares and I can look at those flaws as a learning experience or lessons on how to do a better job the next time. In this case, the big difference is using a dado stack in my table saw for the first time to cut the joinery. This is something that I wasn't set up to do before with the small job site saw that I used to have. When I was shopping for a new table saw, having the ability to do precise dado and rabbit cuts was a high priority on my checklist. This is a good time to bring up Acme Tools, as they are helping me bring you this project and they also played an important role in my determining which new table saw was right for me. They put together a list of the top table saws currently for sale in 2018 and made it really easy to compare different models. From budget-friendly job site saws up to professional quality cabinet saws, you can get a good feel for what's on the market in a short amount of time. Check out the link in the description to go over to Acme Tools blog and see what table saw is best for you. Since this is my first time using a dado stack, I'm not going to try to give you any sort of guidance on the right way to use them. I was pretty cautious about setting up the blades and I worked carefully as I made the cuts. The end result was one of the most stable cabinets I've ever built and it was really easy to put together because all the pieces lined up perfectly and held each other in place. All I had to do was add glue and a few brad nails to hold it together. It also helped to use a couple of pipe clamps in the operation because some of my boards were a little bit bowed and it just helped square things up. These small pieces don't actually serve any functional purpose. I decided I was going to use the front edges of this plywood box as a sort of face frame. So these three strips are just cosmetic and will show through the gaps between the middle drawers. I worked out the sizing of my drawers and my plans, but what works out perfectly in the virtual world doesn't always line up in reality. To compensate for plywood that doesn't necessarily measure up to its claimed value, I measured the real space that the drawers would fit into. I held one piece of plywood in place to account for the width lost in the drawer sides, then I took that measurement and subtracted another inch to account for the pair of drawer slides. After cutting all the drawer parts to their corrected sizes, I used the dado stack once again to add a rabbit to the ends of the side pieces. Then I cut a thin dado into the inside face of every drawer piece to create a channel for the drawer bottoms. Assembling the drawers was once again a piece of cake, thanks to having these pre-cut grooves all set up correctly. I just provided a little encouragement with a rubber mallet to get the drawer bottoms in place. Then I put glue on the rabbits and slid the front and back pieces in place. A few more brad nails held things together while the glue dried. When putting the drawer slides on the vertical sliding panel, I just let them sit flat on the workbench as a reference point. Next, I had to install the other pieces of the slides inside the cabinet, and I like to do this with the cabinet lying on its side to avoid fighting gravity. More out of sheer dumb luck than any sort of planning, I was able to push the slides tight up against the top and bottom of the space, and that put everything in perfect alignment. Switching to the drawer bodies, I attached these slides with a half-inch plywood spacer underneath. This makes the full slide line up exactly with the bottom of the drawer. I used two scrap pieces cut just a shade higher than the top fake rail to reference off the bottom of the cabinet. I butted the slide up to that and screwed it down, then flipped the cabinet over and did the same thing. Then I cut the same scrap pieces to the height of the middle rail and repeated the process and so on down the line until all the drawers were in. This is a good way to get dummy proof installation with a very minimal amount of waste material. I flattened and squared a rough sawn black walnut board then cut it down to size to make drawer fronts out of it. 
I used a bevel cutting jig on the table saw to add an interesting profile around the face of each drawer front. You might think you could make these cuts just by running the board along the fence, especially on small pieces like these, but this jig makes the process much easier and safer by firmly holding the workpiece and letting you keep your hands far out of harm's way. I drilled holes for the handles at the drill press, then I added some fast drying satin polyurethane to make that black walnut pop. I cut a strip of wood to exactly one quarter inch to use as a spacer when lining up the faces on the cabinet. Lying the strip on the workbench, I lined up the first face, then fastened it to the drawer behind it by running screws through the handle holes. I used another spacer to line up the vertical face and attached that as well. Then I just moved the spacers and worked my way up. I was actually pretty nervous that I would have gotten one of my measurements wrong and these wouldn't line up right at this point. But when I got to the two corners that would make or break this look, they were exactly in line. With all the faces lined up, I could pull the drawers out, then run screws in from the back to hold them in place permanently. Then I pulled the front screws back out and installed the drawer poles in their place. I spaced out the different things I wanted to hang from the sliding panel. Then I made marks, drilled a few holes, and glued in some dowels. At this point, the cabinet was finished, so I cleaned out the space under the table saw, put the cabinet in position, and started loading it up. I wanted to point out that I didn't put wheels on this because I didn't intend for it to move around. And without wheels, I was able to get three to four more inches of usable height built into the cabinet. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to build one of these yourself, I'm going to put the uh, diagram and the cut list for free on my website so you can go over there and get yourself a place to start on building one of your own. I want to thank Acme Tools again for supporting this video. If you're in the market for a table saw, you should definitely go check out their blog post because you're going to learn a lot of information in a short amount of time about all the table saws you might be interested in. And that's really about it. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.